Welcome back. With market volatility on the rise, it just strikes one that it is uh, the broker who stands to make the most money. <laughs> That's it. Brokerage stocks have moved in tandem with the overall markets and in recent quarters one has also seen some pressures on brokerage commissions given the rising competition. Does this mean consolidation in the space is likely or will such companies have to look at other diversified avenues of income? To discuss all of this and more and of course the, also the market outlook, we have with us none other than Nirmal Jain, Chairman, Founder and Managing Director of Indian Frontline. Nirmal, it's Thank a pleasure you. to talk to you, Thank uh, you. Uh, as always. Uh, coming to your business first, now let's take a look um, at how the turnover on BSE, NSE cash markets uh, together. Now the combined turnover, how that has behaved, yeah, there you go. Now, if, if we are looking at a one-year time frame, then we see a distinct trend in turnover cooling off. Now, you have maintained your market share in this market, but some analysts are concerned about what is happening to your brokerage yields, especially the net of service tax yield is uh, pretty much uh, below uh, seven basis points now for you? Yeah, yeah. So it would be around that. Right. So what, what does this signify? Do you think uh, yields are going to remain under pressure going forward? Yeah, yields have come under pressure in the last two years, in fact. And uh, maybe the impact was seen significantly uh, more in the last year and last quarter in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at, I mean, we have two large significant segments of our businesses. One is our retail and the other is institutional business. In retail business, very broadly, mm -hmm. Uh, FNO turnover now accounts for almost 80% of market volumes and our vol no, our share will be more or less similar right. or at least we will mimic the trend in terms of okay. uh, movement year over year or quarter over quarter mm -hmm. which was in fact only 65% about 18 months or 24 months ago and cash market share accordingly has fallen from say 35% to 20% and as all of us know that typically brokers will be able to charge on an average 3 to 4 basis points on FNO mm -hmm. and maybe around 10 to 15 basis points on cash market turnover. So weighted average yield has come down. Mm -hmm. Even in our, uh, well not in our, but maybe industry-wide, I would say in institutional business, if you see, there's a trend towards many large uh, FIs and mutual funds are moving to DMA. At least part of their business is going to, uh, you know, in the direct market access where obviously the brokerage yield will be significantly lower. Uh, I personally feel that, you know, this is a tendency when markets uh, do not have a trend. Mm -hmm. And now, whatever volumes, whatever mix change that we have seen in last uh, you know, few quarters uh, may stay, but is unlikely to aggravate further. In fact, you know, FN is already 80% of the market, so I don't think hmm. uh, it may become 85% or whatever, but it's hmm. not going to make material difference uh, hmm. in terms of going forward yield on a quarter on quarter basis. So yields are already low, below, say, 7 basis points. Right. You know, maybe uh, this quarter, I think they will maintain similar kind of levels hmm. and going forward even if there is a pressure, I don't think they will go down significantly. Hmm. And one key reason is that from the investor's point of view, securities transaction tax now has become significantly more than the brokerage. Hmm. So the impact cost doesn't change. So it's not that there is a pressure from uh, customer in terms of pricing, but it's more because of mixed change. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your fund-based business. Now your margin funding business hmm. has grown at high popping rates. And this had, that, that has really uh, contributed to uh, driving your entire loan book growth. Now, is that kind of growth sustainable going forward? Uh, I think margin funding business has not really grown uh, very, uh, you know, that significantly, but it may appear so. Okay. Uh, primarily what had happened, if you go back in the last year, uh, last financial year, last quarter was very dull and very bad for the market and mm -hmm. the sentiment was very low. Mm -hmm. So the margin funding book in those uh, one or two quarters had come down significantly lower than what it used to be. But even now, our mm -hmm. margin funding book is one third of uh, what it was at the peak, which was uh, end of 2007. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, that was not sustainable. Uh, they were not sustainable. Right. And even the low, which was made, uh, say, about you know a year and a half back, which was you know in 2008 end mm -hmm. or maybe 2009 beginning was also uh, unreasonably or unusually low. Hmm. So maybe it has just uh, jumped back to the normal level. Hmm. But whatever margin funding book we are seeing, again, will move in line with the market, but it looks more or less sustainable at these levels. Congratulations on bagging the uh, bagging the brokerage license in yeah. Colombo. Thank you. But why Colombo? <coughs> uh, it's very interesting, actually. When you know, Sri Lanka, uh, more than 80% people are educated, English-speaking uh, population per capita income is significantly more than India. And this country has come out of long war of 25 years, has huge natural resources. Uh, so you know, many, you know, you see that when you want to get into broking, licenses take uh, unusually long time. 
with the regulators, the economy was just opening up. So we thought that it's a good time to go. And in, in terms of ethnic population, cultural, they are very similar to what right. we are here in India. So we're looking at, and it has been our strategy to go expand and geographically de-risk our business. And uh, we want to expand in geographies where uh, uh, you know, we'll be more comfortable. I mean, it's, it's not viable for us to go to developed markets of Europe and US and compete with them. Hmm. But I think Sri Lanka is a market which, you know, suit, which fits our uh, our core competencies. Hmm. But what about the market? Uh, is risk aversion really for real? Because one part of the market does believe that if Europe were to go down, risk aversion is going to rise. But on the other hand, if uh, it's the Western world which is in a financial mess, uh, the fund flows are also going to flow into emerging markets like ours. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting to understand the correlation between the markets and uh, people say whether decoupling is happening or not. Mm -hmm. But if you really look at last 12 to 18 months, decoupling has already happened because our markets have significantly outperformed the Western market. Mm -hmm. So what happens when there's an event and there are jitters that then everything falls. Mm -hmm. But when there's a recovery, then you will see that uh, the markets which have fallen for fundamentally uh, prob fundamental problems like the Western markets, they don't rise back to the normal levels. Mm -hmm. But the emerging markets, and particularly you know, the countries like India, China, they get back to uh, their normal fundamentals. I believe that you know, what has happened in the previous crisis, previous big fall that we saw, uh, many FIs sold out you know, fearing that India will also see zero or negative growth. And there were many articles uh, written by some Indians and some other people in the uh, Western media that Indian growth rate will probably come down to 0% or 2% or whatever. Now they've seen mm -hmm. that that is not correct and 8% or 7%, whatever we, you know, is not so significantly different, that growth is here to stay and is sustained. So I think that even now, like Lehman, of this kind of a crisis that happened, if it happens again, and it's quite likely that maybe we may have some shock from, Euro from the European market don't economy. Don't yeah, no, we don't want it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. fact of the matter is that next six months, 12 months, you know, unexpected things mm. will keep happening. Mm. Uh, I think that Indian markets will not see that kind of panic, what we saw, uh, you know, post bear terms or Lehman crisis. Mm. Right. Because now, Three, four reasons for that. Hmm. One is that most of the FIs have discovered that Indian market in terms of growth are different, hmm. and at every dip, they think there's an opportunity to buy because you know those who bought at those uh, you know abnormally low level have made a lot of money. Hmm. Secondly, we also now are discovering that our insurance companies have a lot of money to invest in equity market. If you see last financial year, FIs sold out something like 16 billion dollars. Insurance companies bought 16 billion dollars, and uh, a lot more money is coming in. And thirdly. Uh, a domestic story is here to stay, which is, uh, see, India's fiscal deficit is financed more by domestic debt, which is very unlike, say, European or US market where the fiscal deficit is yeah. financed by external debt. Hmm. So we are that way reasonably, you know, cushioned and immune from, uh, I won't say that there won't be an, any impact. Hmm. I mean, there will be an event impact, hmm. but that will taper off, you know, very soon.